Good to be with you today, people. I hope you have a fantastic day and a great week. Uh, we're talking about the theme of what it means to stand. That's a great term that is used in the Bible. There's many implications and so many applications, just that one word. But we want to talk today about what it means to stand in. We've spoken about standing on, declaring a foundation and faith in God and, and the standing on His Word and His promises. We've spoken about standing up. We talk about standing up for our faith, standing up for, for our allegiance to grow, standing up for one another. These are all great and incredibly important things. But I want to talk to you today a little bit about what it means to stand in. Stand in. We're going to spend a couple of days on this one. It's going to be a good one. I want to talk about standing in. Uh, I want to suggest to you we're going to stand in for Jesus because Jesus is no longer physically here. You say, how can we possibly how could we in our right minds think that we could stand in for Jesus? After all, he was Jesus. I'm just me. What do you mean I get to stand in for him? Well, it's an interesting thing because Jesus spoke a number of times about what this would look like. He said, one day you will need to stand in for me because you're going to become fishers of men. Fishing for things and fishing for finance and fishing for wealth and is one thing, but fishing for men is another thing. And they would have said, but Jesus, isn't that what you came to do? You came out of heaven to fish for men so you could take the greatest catch back to heaven again. And Jesus said, yep, that's what I came to do. But what I'm going to do, Jesus would have said, is I'm going to teach you guys how to fish. And you're going to fish for men. Because for I'm not going to be here for all the time. There will be a time when I'll be here and a time when I will be leaving and you better learn how to do this while I'm not here. I'm intrigued when you look at uh, people who do plays on stages and these great, great productions. You know, they have stand-ins for different actors that if one is sick or one is on leave or one is exhausted, then they have a stand-in guy or a stand-in girl who will take the place of the one who has been center stage. And I look at that and I say, that's us. We get to stand in for Jesus. For all those years, he, he stood center stage. He came. He declared so many beautiful things. He, he died on the cross. He showed people how to become what he wanted them to be. And then he left and he said, guys, you've got to stand in for me. I think, I think that's what the Great Commission was all about. When Jesus left this planet, he said to his guys, you know, you need to go out into the world and, and you need to save the world. And they would have looked like we said just now, and they would have said, hey, Jesus, nice thought. But isn't that your job? And Jesus said, no, nope, kind of passing the baton to you. You need to run the race. You need to stand in for me because physically I will no longer be here. I love the term too, the term ambassador, an ambassador for God. And I, I read here in, in 2 Corinthians, let me just read, it's just one verse. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 19, it says this, And he has committed to us, that's you and to me, the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. You know what an ambassador is, hey? An ambassador is somebody who stands as a representative of. We have American ambassadors, we have... Israeli ambassadors, we have Swedish and Norwegian ambassadors. An ambassador is simply a representation or a representative of the country from which he comes. And Jesus said, I want you to be an ambassador for me. I want you to represent me. So represent him well, people. Don't represent, represent Jesus wrong, because that wouldn't be cool at all. But Jesus has left us here to fish for men to be a representative of his, to be an ambassador of his, to reflect him. And you say, how do I do that? Let me tell you, it's easy. Because Jesus has said that the power of God in us will live his life out through us because we have the Holy Spirit. As we cooperate with the Holy Spirit, as we become more like Jesus by thinking, put on the mind of Christ, asking yourself, what would Jesus do? How would Jesus live? What would Jesus say? What would Jesus think? How would Jesus act? All of a sudden, the world is looking at you and saying, hey man, you don't look normal. You don't represent the normal 
values and the priorities and the, and the motives of this world. There's something different about you, and indeed there is. We live for another kingdom. We're not part of this kingdom, people. Don't get too comfortable down here. This is not our home. This is just a place where God has put us on here to fulfill a mission for Him. And He wants us to be just that, to stand in for Him. Personally, apply this, if you will. You students out there, you're at school. It's a tough place to stand for Christ, but you've got to stand in for Jesus. And look, look at your world around you and say, what would Jesus do amongst these people? You've got to be that to them. You businessmen, in a tough economic world, man, you've got to stand in for Christ. You've got to reflect His principles, reflect His life. You guys, the students at university, you sportsmen out there, for goodness sake, represent Jesus and represent Him well. Don't represent Him as you think He should be or when you feel like it, because it will catch up on you and He will be embarrassed by the way that you have lived. Represent Jesus well. You are a fisher of men, you are an ambassador of God, and you are here to finish the job that Jesus began. Oh man, I'm excited about that. We get to finish the job that he started. I hope we do well, people. I really do. There's a lot at stake here. Go and have a good day now. Bye.